Hello everyone and welcome back to Crossfit Gaming. Today we're going to take a look at the Mega Strike. This Pixar Art Metroidvania-like platformer promises a huge open world and great gameplay. Whether it can deliver on this promise is the question we will try to answer today. It is available on Steam for 12 euros and 99 cents, or a regional equivalent. Before I get into the review, I should mention that this game has been provided to me by the platformer for free. So, a Metroidvania style platformer with pixel art graphics. Well, I'm not usually into platformers that much, but I loved Halo Night last year and this game seems to be in a very similar genre. And with graphics that do speak to me very much as I personally also dabble into occasionally creating pixel art and also to resemble one of my favorite arcade games of all time, Metal Slug. So let's go and see whether this game is good to buy are not good to buy. And as is the norm here on Crossus Gaming, we will start by looking over the mechanics and how they feel. At its core, a Mega Strike is your basic action platformer set in the near future. That means you will get your share of sci-fi, but also realistic guns. Your character, or more specifically characters, are the ones who will be predominantly using the weapons more fitting towards realism and the enemies will of course be using a combination of the same and a few more futuristic weapons. At the very center of Omega Strike's mechanic is the character swap. You as the player have access to three playable characters at the start, but two of them are taken away from you after the prologue and you have to get them back. The first character, and the one you get to keep after the prologue, is Sarge, just the guy who has an assault rifle. Then we have Bear with the grenade launcher and the ability to push boulders, and last but not least, there is Dex with a shotgun and a double jump. These characters then get a few upgrades that can be also put into two basic categories. Pure stab upgrades, these are there for your weapons and to boost the damage and the range of the weapons and you buy them with gold you find around the level. And then there are a few upgrades you get as drops from the bosses. These are usually movement abilities that allow you to get to the parts of the game you haven't been able to get before. The swap between characters is very welcomed, as it provides three very different playstyles that are all needed to complete the game. Though I will have two complaints about the mechanic. First of all, I really don't like the fact that you are presented with the mechanic at the very start of the game, get some time to play around with it and say to yourself, Wow, this seems pretty awesome! But then the game just takes this feature away from you and forces you to play for a decent amount of time without this particular feat. The second thing I didn't like that much is about the movement abilities you get from few of the bosses. They feel like such a missed opportunity as they aren't really used for anything else than to get to the parts of the game you haven't been able to. Let me give you guys two examples. One of the abilities that Sarge gets is the ability to distrain certain blocks with his gunfire. This could have also easily been translated something like penetrating bullets. Or Dex, who gets a little dash to traverse areas that would have been too large to get over even with his double jump, but the dash is just left there instead of giving something like a little bit of immunity frames. And that would then give the developers an option to make the bosses even harder, but again, it just sits there. The second largest mechanic, well, it's not really a mechanic, it's more of a feature this time, is the open world, which is composed of five main maps that then branch out into different sections. And yeah, the open world is really, really big. And as is the standard in Metrovania games, there is a huge amount of backtracking involved, as you need to gather the movement abilities to get to new branches of the map to gather more movement abilities to allow you to get into more branches of the map, to add more movement abilities to allow you to get more branches of the map. You see where I'm going with this, right? And I will be honest with you guys, I'm not the biggest fan of backtracking games, but I do understand that this is a very common feature in Metroidvania games. And once I realized that there is an item that teleports you back to the main hub, the game became much more pleasurable. But I do still wish that the quick travel system in game was a bit more fleshed out. And lastly, there's the combat. And it's pretty simplistic. Just shoot your enemies and avoid their attacks. 
But that doesn't mean it's easy, not by any stretch of the imagination. The trick to making it easier for yourself is picking the right character for fight the right kind of enemies. For example, Sarge is best for sniping enemies from half away the screen because of his superior range. Bear is the only one who can kill enemies that are at lower platforms than you are. And Dex, well, Dex just has the highest DPS and his double jump allows you to kill enemies way higher than you are. And apart from fighting regular monsters, then we have the bosses. There is one for each branch of the map and two for the last section. So a quite decent number of them. They're pretty nice and require you to learn the moveset for sure. But sadly, I do again have a little bit of a problem with them. Once you collect all the characters and you are free to use whichever one you want, it soon becomes pretty clear that using Dex, the one with the shotgun and the double jump, is just superior. Not only is the double jump often the only way to avoid attacks from the bosses, but his high DPS also means you just kill the bosses quicker. Once I got him, I used him almost exclusively to kill bosses with the exception of one phase on two bosses where I... On one, I had to use Bear as the boss was below you. And then there was the very last boss where just being close wasn't even an option. And giving bosses phases that would require you to use different fa characters, like on these two bosses, that would really solve this issue. But sadly, it wasn't really the case here. So it may seem I do have a lot of issues with Omega Strike. But the thing is, they aren't really problems that would hugely take away from the fun. Some of them might not even be a problem for you personally. You might be okay with getting a glimpse of what you can do before losing it. You might be okay with a lot of backtracking in game. You might not care that there is a character who is better at boss fights. But yeah, I think it is my duty as a game reviewer to point these potential problems out. But at the same time, it is also my duty to tell you that the core gameplay is actually fun and satisfying. Okay, that's pretty much all I have to say about the mechanics and the gameplay, so now it's time to move on to the graphics. Omega Strikes uses a very classy pixel art style that might seem a little underwhelming at first, but as you play more and more, you get to understand how much beauty can be found in simple things. And if there was something I would compare it to, it would probably be the old classic arcade game Metal Slug. Now a little bit of check on the music of Omega Strike, and yeah, it's pretty nice. It's a nice 8-bit soundtrack, not special in any way, but works pretty well. And performance-wise, Omega Strike worked also very well. No crashes, no bugs, and it also ran well, but that was pretty much to be expected, as is you know, a TD game that could run on a cell phone these days. So, in conclusion, Omega Strike is a good Metroidvania game with a few flaws, but none of them really take something away from the game that would not make it fun to play. And that's the really important thing. If you like pixel art, 8-bit music and Metroidvania kind of games, well, even just platformers in general, Omega Strike is certainly a game you should try out. The value proposition is also decent as it took me about 11 hours to finish the game on regular difficulty and there still is the hard difficulty if I wanted to go through that. So that's it for today guys, hope you liked the review and if you did please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel and comment if you had something you would like to add. See you guys later with more gaming content.